Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back for another video. And today we're gonna to be reacting to British history in 20 minutes. As an American, I really don't know anything about the history of Great Britain or anything relating to it whatsoever, because we really didn't learn about that. I've taken, you know, world history and things like that, but it was always just a brief overview. So I'm really interested in, you know, getting a relatively in-depth uh, view of British history. So. Yeah, if you haven't checked out my channel, make sure you check it out after this and consider subscribing. I'd appreciate it. Um, and yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> Let me put my glasses on. I took them off just because I had that light on. I have a little ring light, so um, yeah, let's get into the video. Here we go. History of Britain in 20 minutes. Um, yeah, let's get it, baby. I'm excited, dude. Like, I have not learned anything about British his history like whatsoever it's ridiculous um, Americans do not care about anything outside of America and it's just the truth so uh, here we go oh typical background music The United Kingdom is a nation located in the British Isles made up of England Scotland Wales and Northern Ireland that. Thousands of years ago, the Isles were inhabited by long-forgotten pre-Celtic people, known as the Beaker Culture, named for their distinctive pottery beakers. Little is known is of them, but it has been suggested that really? these people laid the foundations for the mysterious Stonehenge, a series of heavy standing stones which were transported from 150 miles away and arranged to form a calendar, marking the days of the summer and winter solstice. Over time, waves of Celtic-speaking people arrived from the European continent, who soon came to form the Britonic, Gaelic and Pictish people. These people were not a unified people, but were rather many tribes who shared a similar pagan religion, language and culture. The Romans invaded, conquering what's now England and Wales, but, surprise, surprise. but failed to conquer the Pictish tribes to the north. The Romans launched several campaigns into this land they called Caledonia. However, their fortifications were soon overrun and abandoned, and they retreated to Hadrian's Wall. Uh. Their conquered lands were incorporated into the Roman Empire, becoming the province of Britannia. They brought Roman <laughs> customs and laws, improved infrastructure, and connected many towns and cities with Roman roads. When the Romans left, there was a great migration of Germanic tribes. These were the Jutes, Angles, and Saxons, with their language Old English. Their settlement pushed many Britons to areas in Wales, Brittany, and a kingdom known as Dumnonia, while Scotland eventually evolved into four kingdoms. Oh yeah, dude, that's why there's so many like castles and stuff, because they were literally kingdoms. I feel like Clash of Clans originated from this. <laughs> the smallest of these were the Scots, who were originally from Ireland, the Britons of Strathclyde, the Anglo-Saxon. Whenever I think of a barbarian, I always think of like something like this. The Kingdom of Bernicia Kingdom. and the Picts of Alba. For unknown reasons, the Jutes disappeared from history, but the Angles and Saxons eventually formed seven kingdoms. I said the Jews. I Wessex, like, uh, Sussex, Kent, okay. Essex, East Anglia, Mercia, and Bernicia became Northumbria. After the collapse of Dumnonia, the remaining territory of Cornwall fought against the powerful Kingdom of Wessex. Cornwall eventually fell under the control of Wessex, but it managed to keep its own culture. Wales at this point was also made up of several separate kingdoms, the largest being Gwynedd in the north, Powys in the east, and Dufford to the south. The British Isles soon saw numerous Norse raiders from Scandinavia. These were the Vikings. I knew it. Dude, the Vikings were dangerous. Like, you know those huge ships they had with like 40 rowers or whatever on each side? If you see a Viking pulling up on the shore, bro, honestly, just leave because they're, they throw an ax like, they strong too for no reason. And they began settlement on many of the Scottish Isles, the Isle of Man, and they even founded the city of Dublin in Ireland. The Scots and the Picts then decided to unite under Kenneth MacAlpine to form the Kingdom of Alba. The Kingdom of Alba grew strong over the years, and eventually Strathclyde was brought into the fold. Meanwhile, Danish Vikings arrived in the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms for conquest. 
After fighting the King of Wessex, Alfred the Great, the Dane law was formed, a land where the laws of the Danes held influence over the Anglo-Saxons, controlling the region and its affairs. The Anglo-Saxons eventually defeated the last Viking King of York, Eric Bloodaxe, and Athelstan became the first King of the English. Although, the newly formed Kingdom of Denmark would conquer England and even found a short-lived Danish dynasty under Canute. The Norsemen had a dramatic Alex impact on Abbey the Isles, so it's Abbey. no wonder some words in the oh English language have Norse origin. After defeating formidable sea raiders from Ireland, the Western Isles, Scandinavia and Anglo-Saxon forces from Mercia, Griffid ap Llewellyn subdued his rivals in southwest Wales. Llewellyn became the only Welsh king ever to rule over the entire territory of Wales. He was defeated by the English Earl Harold Godwinson and killed by his own men, leading to the Welsh kingdoms splitting apart once more. At the death of Edward the Confessor, there was a succession dispute between four claimants. Harold Godwinson was elected as king, and managed to defend England from an invasion by the Norwegian king Harold Hardrada. However, Harold had to march his army south to defend Jeez, against Duke look William. Look at Harold, bro. That man has some blonde hair. But that's probably not what they actually look like. It's probably just like a depiction of him. Normandy, who had crossed the English okay. Channel. According to tradition, at the Battle of Hastings, Harold was killed by an arrow to the eye, and the Norman invaders were victorious. The new King William defeated a number of rebellions, That's built a new like design that. of castles called Moat and Baileys, and introduced a number of reforms, like Trial by Combat and the Doomsday Book. Right, the Norman start. dynasty invaded into South Wales and parts of Ireland, creating the Lordship of Ireland. Ireland is so At court, bigger than nobles spoke and conducted God. sessions Great. in the Anglo-Norman language, which endured for centuries and left an incredible mark in development of modern English. Right. After a brief civil war, Henry II would marry Eleanor of Aquitaine, establishing the Angevin okay, Empire, beginning a long rivalry against France. Richard the Lionheart defended much of this territory, and also became a central Christian commander during the Third Crusade, achieving considerable victories against his Muslim counterpart, Saladin. <laughs> Under King John, Muslim heavy Muslim. taxes were imposed on his barons in order to pay for his expensive foreign wars. The barons rebelled and forced John to sign the Magna Carta, a charter that established the principle that everyone was subject to the law, even the king, guaranteeing the rights of individuals, the right to justice, and the right to a fair trial. Very advanced for the time, don't you think? That's crazy. Most of North Wales remained independently ruled by several Welsh princes, until 1216, when Llewellyn the Great became the ruler of the Principality of Wales. This would be the case until Edward I, who conquered Wales in 1284, effectively becoming part of England. He looks like he's from that At the death of King Alexander III, Scotland was left with 14 rivals for succession. To prevent civil war, the Scottish magnates asked Edward I of England to elect a claimant. John Balliol was elected king, but was constantly undermined by Edward, who opposed Scottish independence. Edward decided to launch several campaigns to conquer Scotland and depose King John, to which he acquired the nickname Hammer of the Scots. <laughs> Under a brave Scottish knight, William Wallace, the Scots mounted resistance against the English, defeating them at the Battle of Stirling Bridge. Edward. Good, good. Hold on, hold on. The Scots mounted resistance against the English, defeating them at the. Look at this guy right here. <laughs> it's like Battle of Stirling Bridge. No Edward marched north in person and defeated Wallace in battle, but Wallace managed to escape. He was later captured and executed, but his efforts allowed Robert the Bruce to rise up and defeat the English, securing Scottish independence. Okay, okay. When the King of France died without an heir, Edward III was technically eligible to the crown through his mother. The French court denied his claim and instead installed Philip of Valois. Why? Edward paid homage to Philip as he owned the lands of Gascony, and was essentially a vassal to the King of France. Due to disagreements, Edward reasserted his claim to the throne and invaded France beginning the Hundred Years' War. The English achieved notable victories at the Battle of Crecy, Poitiers and Agincourt thanks to the technical superiority of the longbow, but was unable to conquer the French- Like, this is what happened. like when people say war isn't human nature, just show them this video. Like with the appearance of Joan of Arc, so who lifted the French spirit say, and oh, turned the tide war, of the war. Upon the death of Edward out. III, an entire generation was skipped in the line of succession, which prompted bitter rivalry between several claimants. 
Most notably were the Houses of York and Lancaster. Tensions were high until a bloody age of warfare erupted between these two factions in the Wars of the Roses. Mm -hmm. It's so in-depth and complicated this period will likely become a video of its own. The wars ended with the arrival of the Tudor dynasty. Henry VIII wanting a divorce yes. split with the church creating his own Church of England. They had McDonald's back then? Not... This ultimately them. led to a series of religious it's differences them. between future yeah. English monarchs. In between his six wives and naval adventures, Henry gave Wales representation in Parliament and created the Kingdom of Ireland, but realistically he only controlled an area known as the Pale. In addition, Henry's paranoia and suspicion amounted to tens of thousands of executions, including his friends and wives. <laughs> they had McDonald's back then. During the 16th century, they the largest and most powerful empire was Spain, under King Philip II. England, under Elizabeth I, were helping Dutch rebels reject Spanish rule, and many English privateers were also intercepting <laughs> Spanish silver on its journey back from the New World. This yeah, angered the Spanish funny. king, and the final straw came when Elizabeth had Mary Queen of Scots executed, because she did not want Scotland falling under Catholicism. The Spanish Armada, consisting of 130 ships, was deployed to invade England. At the Battle of Gravelines, an English victory forced the Spanish fleet to sail around the British Isles before storms in the north of Scotland destroyed the remaining ships. Oh. In retaliation, the English, led by Sir Francis Drake, amassed their own armada to invade Spain. They up with Drake's? Oh. But this huh. too became a failed endeavour. Born in this period, William Shakespeare became a renowned poet. Listen, I know William, his poetry is great, bro, but that forehead, man. I don't know. I'm probably gonna ball too, so I can't even be talking, but yeah. I, honestly, I don't even like Shakespeare. Like, do you guys know how much boring stuff we had to read in school because of him? Like, comment down below, are you, do you guys actually like Shakespeare? I know he's brilliant and all that, but like, I don't know, dude. In seventh grade, I really wasn't trying to read Midsummer Night's Dream. Playwright and actor, who contributed significantly to English literature. When Queen Elizabeth of England died without an heir, her closest male relative was James VI of Scotland. James was elected as King of England and Scotland in a personal union, although the countries remained separate political entities. As the first monarch to rule the entire island of Great Britain, several assassination attempts were made by Catholic conspirators. One such assassination attempt was the gunpowder plot by Guy Fawkes, who tried to blow up Parliament. After a failed colony known as Roanoke, England established a successful colony oh, known We know where that is. Virginia, baby. This is when they, yep. Wow, I'm, I'm, I like this now. It's Jamestown, it's cool. which would eventually evolve into the 13 colonies. Yep. At first, expeditions to the New World were mainly driven by religious motives, which were predominantly to convert the natives to their faith. But colonies became more That's profitable, as demand for New World crops like tobacco and sugar increased. <sighs> British ships also made a monopoly on the transportation of captive African slaves that crossed the Atlantic to the Americas. Millions of Africans were shipped in cramped, horrific conditions to work on brutal plantations in the Americas, mm -hmm. and essentially became property to their masters. For 300 years this practice continued in the British Empire, until it was fully abolished in 1833. This period yeah. also actually, I'm gonna put a tag to like a video I made about how, like, they actually abolished it, how they went about it. I reacted to a video about that, so if you want to see that, definitely watch that after this. Saw a wave of plantations in Ireland where Irish lands were confiscated and given to English and Scottish settlers. Tensions would rise between Charles I and Parliament. Following disagreements, conflicts between royal and parliamentary authority within England led to the English Civil War. The country became divided between parliamentarians, known as the Roundheads, and royalists, known as the Cavaliers. Under Oliver Cromwell and the New Model Army, the parliamentarians defeated Charles and executed him for treason. Cromwell became Lord Protector and dissolved the monarchy. But Always shortly after his system, death, man. it was restored under it Charles II. Oh, Charles II married Catherine of Braganza, and when she arrived from Portugal, she introduced the greatest... She looks bougie, bro. She looks like... Look at me! I'm Catherine of Braganza. This beverage of all time. She said... Tea. Tea had been used by China for centuries, but its yeah, arrival in the 17th enough. century captured the interest of the English aristocracy, and soon captivated every other Englishman. In 1685, a Catholic James II became king in a largely Protestant nation. 
James's daughter Mary and her Dutch husband William were both Protestant, and many nobles unhappy with the Catholic king invited William to become king. William found considerable support when he invaded, and he was soon crowned King William III in what became known as the Glorious Revolution. Although William's supporters dominated the government, there remained a significant following for James II in I the see. Scottish Highlands. Clan MacDonald of Glencoe was one such group who had not been prompt in pledging allegiance. It's just crazy to see, like, over time, as factions change, there is just always a clashing. Like, I keep saying, dude, human nature is telling you, man. Just to the new monarch. Crazy. For this reason alone, 38 members of the clan were murdered in what became known as the Massacre of Glencoe. After Scotland's failed colonial endeavours in Nova Scotia and Panama, and an economic crisis in the 1690s, there was a union between England and Scotland, forming the United Kingdom of Great Britain. The okay. House of Stuarts had ruled Britain for... I'm not going to comment on her, because I'm not a bad person, but yeah, it seems like they were in turmoils, turmoil, so they said, okay, let's agree to disagree and come together, because if we don't, <laughs> we're not making it anywhere just over a century, but ended with the death of Queen Anne. Sophia of Hanover was the granddaughter of James I, and her son George became king. Great Britain soon found itself drawn into several European wars, most notable being the War of the Spanish Succession and the Seven Years' War. Yeah, I've heard about that. Victories those. in these wars resulted in territory for the empire, particularly in North America, although it resulted in considerable debt. In order to make up for this debt, King George III ordered heavy taxes be placed on the 13 colonies. This, among other reasons, called- That's one, yeah. That's the goat right there. The goat on Delaware River, baby. ...donated into the American War of Independence. And with financial help from France and Spain, the Americans were victorious. The East India Company, which was founded by Elizabeth I, had grown rapidly and even operated its own military and controlled a sizable amount of territory. The company had set up fortified warehouses where they traded with many Indian rulers, acquiring important luxuries. That's my wallet. There's no money in there though. Because I'm broke. I'm a broke American. Luxuries like textiles and spices. Well, they had colonies, yeah. One of the most important cities of all was Bengal, as it had a large taxable population. The governor of Bengal, Robert Clive, ordered that the population grow <laughs> opium to that? export to China, <laughs> instead of growing food as it Whoa. proved to be a great source of income. However, that was with like the poppy, poppy seeds or whatever, the opium. When a famine struck, it resulted in the deaths flowers, of millions of people. Like Meanwhile, Captain James Cook arrived at New Zealand and the southeast coast of Australia. Although he wasn't the first to discover the area because of past Portuguese and Dutch explorers. However, unlike the Dutch and Portuguese, Britain claimed it as their new penal colony, known as New South Wales, with the first convicts arriving in 1778. A new threat had emerged from France, French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. <laughs> Napoleon had come to dominate most of Europe, but Britain's advantage was that she Holy was an baby. island, and the Royal Navy had become a major force at sea. Invasion of Britain was near impossible, and in a series of coalitions, Napoleon was defeated. By the end of the Napoleonic Wars, Britain was growing rapidly into a superpower based on this. Isn't it crazy that, like, right after um, they decided to, you know, unite and become the United Kingdom of Great Britain or whatever? That's when like the success went up. Like they were literally declining, and then they unite, and then boom, everything starts to go on a rise. That's just crazy to me. The supremacy of naval engineering. Furthermore, yep. in Ireland, the Great Famine struck. I remember this in world history. A disease killing potato plants. Rip. Rip. Ireland, which had merged with Britain, potato relied plant. heavily on this crop for food, but the British government forced Ireland to export what little food they had to other areas. Without any aid or food, Ireland's population plummeted by half due to starvation and emigration to countries like the United States. I'm actually part Irish. That's crazy how they just forced him to die. Well, they're like, yo, you, I mean, keep exporting, man. You got to help us out. You got to be part of this. But we literally have nothing to export. I don't care. Export. Export. Things weren't looking so great in India either, as India was rebelling against company rule. 
The East India Company had employed many Indian soldiers known as Sepoys, who were under the command of British oh, yeah. soldiers. These Sepoys grew increasingly unhappy, and a revolt soon occurred, yet it quickly failed due to a lack of unity between Indians. After the rebellion, the British government took direct control, with Queen Victoria being declared Empress of India. During the 19th century, the world was forever changed by the Industrial Revolution. Yep. Society was transformed by technological advances and increasing mechanisation, and would launch Britain to global dominance. Some of the greatest innovations and inventions were the sewing machine, the fire extinguisher, steam-powered engines and turbines, the electric motor and photography. The telegraph was also a major invention, as a message could now be sent from Britain to India in a matter of hours. That was a the establishment invention. of railways and trains also transformed transport forever. Instead of I don't think they invented trains, but yeah, definitely established it. Travelling days by horse and carriage, it now only took a matter of hours by train. Engineering and communication advances not only united the empire, they triggered a manufacturing boom like no other. People flocked from rural areas to city centres for jobs. Productivity reached an all-time high, but the consequences of mass migration resulted in extremely cramped and polluted cities. However, with these problems that were generated, it resulted in an improved sewage system. Newcastle <laughs> focused on shipbuilding. Manchester the cotton industry, oh, yeah, Liverpool so. became a major trading centre, Middlesbrough fixated itself on iron and steel works, the presence of iron ore, limestone and large coal deposits in the West Midlands and South East Wales prompted the establishment of iron works, and Scotland boomed in the linen industry. The Victorian era also saw a major change in society, as families from the poorest backgrounds gained access to education, although it was much stricter than today's standards. The 1860s also saw the rise of the greatest food combination ever, fish and chips. Yo, towards the end if you go to an Irish pub, I swear fish and chips always goes crazy. End of the 19th century, I European powers chips. came together at the Berlin Conference to divide Africa between them. That's a group in South up. Africa known as the Boers, who were originally Africa. Dutch settlers, proved difficult for the British. The Boers lived in two nations, the Free Orange States and the Republic of Transvaal, and both resisted British rule using guerrilla warfare. To counter this, the British placed many women and children in their tens of thousands into concentration camps, where many died from starvation and disease. Britain became a major player in the First World War, and many men proudly volunteered to serve and protect their country. The Great War, as it was called, saw the use of new technology, such as dreadnoughts, warplanes, artillery, machine guns, grenades, chemical weapons, bolt-action rifles, and the first use of the tank. Wow. Many faced horrific conditions in the trenches and witnessed gruesome battles. Millions died and many returned home shell-shocked by what they had seen. I the, the Empire reached this. its territorial height in 1921 after gaining Common territory you know from Germany and the crumbling Ottoman Empire. I forgot the, name. the Empire now ruled over 400 million people and controlled one quarter of the world's landmass. But the reality was, Britain could no longer afford to build bases or ships to defend its empire as it had yeah. before 1914. Ireland finally managed to break away from British rule, and formed the Irish Free State, and shortly after became a republic. The Second World War was more brutal and horrific than the first. Most of Europe had fallen under German Yeah, it was, about the, it was definitely about the World War. Under Prime Minister Winston Churchill, Britain stood strong during the Battle of Britain and the Blitz. Britain were extremely successful at intercepting and decoding enemy communications, with the likes of Alan Turing who cracked the German Enigma code. The war ended with an allied victory, but many nations within the empire felt a desire for independence, and it was clear the empire was about to break. India was one such nation, who were ready to declare their independence. Mohandas Gandhi practiced a non-violent approach, and this proved successful, as shortly after yeah. India gained independence. The Commonwealth of Nations was formed to improve relations and economic ties with former colonies. This still remains today, with 53 members united by language, history, culture, and shared values of democracy. The British Empire officially ended with Hong Kong, Britain's last colony, being handed over to China in 1997. Pretty recently, if you ask me. The Empire committed many atrocities on many different people imposing their culture and civilization while often wiping out native ones. 
On the other hand, this brought about globalisation and the uniting of the modern world. And without such innovations and industrialization, the world might have been a very different place. The United Kingdom suffered a small We're talk about that recession in, in 2008, but has since recovered. Yeah, it so is a multicultural States. society with each everyone. region retaining a presence of its history and culture. If you ever visit, look out for the Welsh cake, the haggis, the whiskey, the Chelsea bun, the parmo, the Cumberland sausage, the Yorkshire pudding, or the Cornish pasty. Yo, so I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna say these two are my favorite. Hold on, this one right here, and that look, those two look good to me. I, drinking, I'm not really with that. That's a long ass sausage, bro. I'm not even. I don't know about that. The UK sausage, remains man. a member of NATO, United Nations, and the World Trade Organization, uh, and uses the pound currency. In 2016, a referendum resulted in 51.9% of voters in favor to leave the European Union. Ooh. Although the countries within the United Kingdom became divided on the matter, leading to the many questions of its future unity. Thank you for watching. Yo, Let right. us know your thoughts. That's, that was a good video, actually. That was really interesting. So, I have some questions for you guys. Let me uh, can put my thing back on, baby. Um, let me ask you all this. So, let's talk about this. So... You know, obviously there definitely are pros and cons to what happened just throughout that history um, and kind of, you know, the atrocities committed along with globalization and like the improvements that were made in society. Like obviously we don't know what society would look like for better and for worse, who knows? So what I want, I'm not really, I don't really have a specific opinion on that. I'm pretty like middle grounded when it comes to this in terms of like, were uh was the united kingdom or was great britain um do i think they contributed more good to society as a whole like human society as a whole than they did bad i'm middle grounded on that like i don't i think it kind of cancels out to some extent but what i want you guys to do is comment down below what you think like do you think that the good outweighs the bad or vice versa do you think they did you know a lot of because they did do a lot of bad stuff and a lot of people will talk about, you know, the ending slavery and how they are very adamant about abolishing slavery, but you still have to take into account that before they did that, they were, you know, a, they played a large part in slavery. And, you know, even after that, they did, I mean, they literally wanted to spread their, impose their religion and beliefs on natives who had different beliefs and, like, were living before them. Now, and that's a completely different argument, but, yeah, I just want you guys to comment down below. I'm really interested in your thoughts. Um, besides for that, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Uh, like I said, check out some of my other videos and comment down below if you want me to react to any specific videos and you know I can make that happen for sure. But uh, that's all I got to say, guys. Make sure, yeah, that's all I got to say, really. Um, I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.